For now, don't even ask me why we're doing this. You'll see that later on. Let's just play a little counting game. So here I have a spreadsheet and you can do this with pen and paper. Let's just start at the easiest level. You start at zero and you start counting up. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see that for a single digit, we have now used up all our symbols regarding uh, a whole number going from zero to nine. If you want to go to the next digit, we have to use the next number starting from zero, which is one, and then you start the process all over again. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So by reusing all of the numbers that we already have here, we can express from zero all the way to 19. Let me organize this just a little bit. Okay, so starting from zero, we go up to nine, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. After 19, again, we follow the same pattern. We use the next number, which is two, and then this process starts over again. Goes up to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So this is all 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. You get the point, but let me just go on for now. 60s, 70s, 80s, and all the way up to the 90s. Now, if you want to go to the next digit, which is 100, we add the third digit and we start back from one. And this entire process or pattern, whatever you call it, starts all over again, starting from 100. So we copy paste from zero all the way to 99. We have 100, 101, 102 all the way down to 199. Okay, exact same pattern. Let me just color this with a different color, something like this. And then you want to get start from the 200. It's the same process all over again. Okay, I'm going to copy from 0 to 99. And then we go from 200 all the way down to 299. So this is fairly simple. Eventually you get to 999. So something like this, 999. And then after 999, you've used up all your possible combinations using 0 to 9. You go to the next digit, 1000, 000, 000, 000. And then everything that you've used up to that point will be copy pasted again all the way up to 1,999, and then 2,000, and it just goes on and on and on. You get the point. So this entire process is called the decimal system. It's something that we're all used to. We're just counting in tens. That's all this is. Starting from zero all the way to nine, we have a separate symbol for each of the numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's tens. Now let's bring up the difficulty level just a little bit. And I'm going to start counting in 16s. And again, we start from 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And in most languages, we don't have a separate symbol for 10. So people started using A, B, C, D, E, F. So we now have a unique symbol for each of the numbers, starting from zero all the way to 15, which is 16 in total. So now if we wanna go from single digits to double digits, we just use the next number after zero, which is one. And then we reuse all of the numbers that we've previously used. So we go from all the way zero to F. Only this time, we're going from 10 all the way to 31. So. We're just reusing all of the symbols that we already have. 
and I'll just put a zero in front just to avoid confusion. And it's the exact same pattern that we were using while we were counting in tens. It just goes on and on and on. So here, starting from 20, which is 32, goes all the way up to 47. And then again, it's the same thing, starting from 30, goes all the way up to 63, and starting from 64, 0 to 4F, which is 79. It just goes on and on and on until you hit 9F. At this point, you've used up all your symbols you can possibly use. And let me just fill up the numbers, avoid confusion. So this is 40s in hex, 30s, and 20s. This is called hexadecimals. Hexa meaning six, decimals meaning tens, 16. And this is just called decimals. It's the same pattern, we're just using different symbols for different numbers. Let me bring up the calculator. I'm gonna pick programmer. Then I'm gonna test some of these numbers. For example, 16 here. So 16 in decimals, you see that it's 10 in hex, 10 here. Let me go down to 32, which is 20 hex. This time let me type in 20 here. So 20 hex would equal 32 in decimals. Let me do another test, something like 72. Okay, click on decimals, 72 equals 48 hex, and you see the numbers matching. And obviously from here we're skipping numbers, so this is not going to match, but, but everything matches up to this point. So everything is pretty easy so far. Let me bring the difficulty up just a little higher. This time I'm going to start counting in twos. 0, 1. And this might be a little confusing now because we're just using two different numbers. And at this point, we've already used up every possible combination using a single digit. So we go up the next digit, start with the next number after 0, which is 1. And then the process starts all over again, 0, 1. Now we've used up every possible combinations in two digits. Now we have to go to the third digit. And again, we add 1 here. And this entire process repeats itself again. So this entire process, we're just copy pasting. Okay, let me fill up the blank spots with zero. And this is all ones. And again, if you want to count higher, we have to now go to the next digit because we have used up every possible combinations using three digits. So we, again, copy the entire previous project, the previous pattern. Okay, and we simply copy paste and then add one more digit. Okay, let me fill out the blank spots with zero. And following the pattern, let me just count a little higher. We've used up every possible combinations with four digits. We go to the fifth digit, copy, so this entire pattern is copied, I'm running out of different colors. And starting with the fifth digit as one, we're simply copy pasting or reusing every combination that we have already used. So let's run our little test again. I'm gonna test the number 16. I'm gonna use the calculator decimals 16 equals 10 in hex 1 0 0 0 0 in binary 1 0 0 0 0 and i haven't written it here but the next number after binary 1 1 1 1 1 would be let me clear everything one and five zeros so one and five zeros equals 32 in decimals 32 here, and 20 
in hex 20 here. So nothing too complex here. We're just counting. We're just counting numbers. Let me run just one more random test. So this is 11000 in binary. Binary. 11000. Which equals 24 in decimals, 24, 18 in hex. Okay, we're pretty much done with our counting game. Now let me point you out to something that might be a little interesting. It's almost beautiful to me. You might have noticed the pattern here. Let me bring up the calculator again. Now I'm just going to start putting in hex numbers. A, 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 A. And there's a certain pattern here between hex and binaries. Let me do it again. A, 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 A. And this doesn't even matter which hex number I use. I can go with B. B, 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 or C, D. Every time I have a single hex digit, you see that I have four binary digits. So A, B, C, D, four hex digits would equal 16 binary digits. This is important because for your computer memory, where every byte has eight ones and zeros, that address can be expressed with just two digits of hexadecimals. So here I've come up with a simple example these are your actual address of your memory and these are integers going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 all the way up to 9. And for your address you can see that we're going from 60 to 64, 64 to 68, 68 to 6C, 6C to 70, 74, 78, 7C, 80, 84. We're going up in fours, 60 to 64, 64 to 68, 44444. And remember that every integer has 32 ones and zeros. Remember our video number one, we have 32 bits or 32 ones and zeros for a single int. And if we look at the actual value here, we have eight digits of hexadecimals. And of course, eight multiplied by four is 32. Just to show you with a calculator, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 8 hexadecimal digits, 32 binary digits. The takeaway here is that by converting binaries into hexadecimals, it gets so much easier to express how many ones and zeros are at what position. For a computer, counting ones and zeros is easy. For humans, it's not. For humans, it's easier to count in hexadecimals. And as you can see, hexadecimals are naturally more efficient way of expressing your memory address. As you're working with C++, you're going to see a bunch of addresses that look like this, but for now, don't worry too much, even if you don't understand this. Most of the time, you're just going to be writing scripts without worrying about this stuff. And you're going to understand more as you write more and more code. So don't worry too much for now. Just understand that these things exist. And uh, that's pretty much it. For your homework assignment, try counting these numbers yourself and just try to understand this or just have a general grasp of what's going on. Just try counting in tens, try counting in sixteens, also try counting in twos. And then check whether you got the numbers right by using a calculator. And uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.